In this episode of the Masterclass series on configuring Reactor, we have now finally come to learning how to build a behavior by ourselves. So in the previous videos, we have created a few layers over here. We have associated them with a variable called menu. So as we are pressing this button, we are changing the, the value of the variable. You see that little variable down there called vmix? Oh, sorry, it's called menu, but it changes between three predefined values. We have defined those values. We have also associated them with each layer. So each layer is only visible when the value is actually selected for the variable. And then finally, we have uh, just done this to give us some visual feedback. There's no meaningful content associated with the encoders. And by the way, if you wonder what we're looking at, this is a simulated PTC fly panel. So it could just as well have been a real PTC fly. This is a Rec Fusion Live, but it has like a PTC fly on the side here. So it's, it's all real, although it is unreal and virtual. But that's a convenience we have chosen for this training series. Let's move on and then see what we have for you in this video. What I want to do is to take this action on A6, button A6, and I will clear it out. What we started out in the first videos was to just associate a parameter for the, uh, the menu variable to it. And then we used a master behavior called step change. A master behavior is something Skyhoy has defined that gives it a function out of the box. That is helping you to not have to to design everything from scratch every time. And most of what we configure for you guys and what you would configure is probably going to just use master behaviors because they are so convenient. When you want to slap some parameter on a joystick or a button on an encoder, pick a master behavior. The list of master behaviors look like this and you can go through, read a little bit of the description and so on. And there's more of these coming. But what we want to do right now is to remove what we just did on this one, like delete behaviors, so we'll just do that. No, wait, actually, that was not what we intended to do. Let's just create this again. So how, how could we get out of it if we were actually in this situation? I'll just add the variable again. So this is what we had. We can go to empty. So what we have done right now is still remove the functionality. You can see the button is blank. The parameter, the, the variable menu is still there, okay? But nothing is happening because we are going to build that ourselves. We'll start with feedback. So that's the point of this video. And feedback means light in the button, display content in the OLED. Okay, so we'll press show more. And then we get into default feedback here, which gives us a chance to choose dimmed as the uh, background color of the button. And uh, you see now the button is lighting up dimmed. If I choose off, then it's back off. If I choose on, then it's like glowing. And on a real physical panel, you would see an intensity difference here. Now let's go to dim because the default feedback is quite often a, a just a slight backlight in the button, but it's not like fully lit. And that's reserved for like an unstate or when you press the button, you want that kind of feedback coming to you. Secondly, we can add a title. So we just press the plus sign and then we can edit the title here and we could write menu, submit. You see that is now in the display, super easy. Then we can go to the text line down here and then we could add a value, right? Now, the thing is, it's not so helpful to add value in case that we have the button change the variable that we saw just before. We want the, just like we already saw when we had the step change behavior, what was that doing? It was showing the value of the variable as we were changing it. So what I want to do is to just go back and edit this one, and then I'll add a dynamic value. But let me first change this one. So just remove this and then press add dynamic value. So here we can just pick our variable, menu, submit, and submit again. And now you can see that here. Now, keep in mind that, again, because we've removed the step change master behavior and we are now doing it ourselves from ground up, there's nothing when we click this button with the simulation that will change the value. Nothing is changing anything. It's just super blank in configuration, just intensity, just the title, which is hard coded menu. And then there's the text line here. But um, let's go over to the uh, inspector for the variable and then see what happens if I click this little flag that will s uh, manipulate the variable just hard coded from the back end here. And you can see that it's actually changing its, uh, its value around. Um, I'm a little bit surprised, honestly. 
Okay guys, after a few seconds of surprise for me, I just needed to figure out what was wrong. Why would the function of my key here suddenly disappear because I'm changing the value of the variable? It turns out that my action of removing, deleting the action on this one and then recreating it, I was not aware where I created it. You see that A6 got defined on the camera select layer. As I went to the preset layer, or the vmix layer, A6, this button, not defined, not defined, so no function available to me. Hmm. Okay, so what I really need to do is to basically cut this guy and then paste it in here. Voila. All right. So let's just check if this variable, if I'm changing the value of the variable, yeah. So the definition of A6 is now down on the training config layer. It is not affected by any variable that would enable or disable layer visibility. Phew. Okay, so we got that cleared out, but I'm not happy yet because what I'm seeing is the raw value. You see it says VMAX presets or cam select. I would rather like the label. So now we get to the next level here. We'll just click on the behavior and show more. And inside of default feedback, I would like to just edit this one again so I can click it here. And what I want to do is to add a modifier. Guys, we don't have a drop down for modifiers. And that's going to be true for a number of points inside this UI. Maybe at the time you watch this video, there is a drop down because that's the kind of stuff my team is working on all the time. We are also extending the, the system behind all the time. So it's like catching up because sometimes we have options that are not yet in the UI. So it is helpful for you to know that in these slides, there is a link to a place on our wiki pages where there's a list of modifiers you can add. So please go and check that out. But for this video, I know that name is a pretty good modifier to put on. So it's like saying, no, I don't want the, the actual value. I want the name of that value. And as soon as I do this, you'll see that we are, ah, ha, ah, ah, ha, sorry about that. <laughs> it's so and so with the stuff that I know. I should stop claiming that kind of stuff. Okay, it's actually so that if I want to do this, I better use current and then name, because that means the current value, the name of the current value, and there you go. Now we have camera select. So let's just go to the variable and then try to check the, these others out. Yes, we get the right values shown inside the display right here. But this also gives me a chance to go back and just check here with the definition of this one that the uh, it, it's not really ideal that the title is menu. I would like that to be dynamic as well. So let's just remove this and then add in a dynamic uh, value from our variable menu. And here we could choose name, right? Uh, better do like that. So we know by doing so, the menu stated in the title looks the same, is the same. But that is actually coming from the name of the variable. So if I put in like that, you'll see that it will be instantly modified over here. Feedback is more than just setting a fixed background color or display content for a button. Even though the display content is dynamic coming from the value of a variable, we also want to be able to change the button color in case some condition is met. And that's what we'll be looking at right now. So let's just go back to the configuration of A6, show more. And we had all this default feedback in here. That's like our background. It will have that no matter what. But then we'll add additional conditional feedback here. And now we need to use integer numbers to order them. So just do what I tell you, use like 10, 20, 30, and so on. So by adding this one 10, we now have a piece of conditional feedback where we could change the color to like red, and then we can associate that with a condition in the system. And one condition we could choose that would be highly meaningful would be to associate it with the variable we have created. And then in here, say if it is equal to the value presets, it should be red. So let's just check that. Currently, it's it's equal to the value cam select. But if we go to the variable and we manipulate it from the back end by selecting presets, you see that the button will light up red now. And if we go to VMAX, it's still white. So white and white for camera select and VMAX, which are the defaults, but presets is going to light up red. So there we had just with the conditions that define the layer visibility, we also had a condition associated 
with the conditional feedback. And guess what we could do? We could just continue like this and add additional conditional uh, additional conditional feedbacks on other indexes. We could try it just quickly right here and say, okay, we have this one, it is 20, it is supposed to be yellow when the value of this is cam select. And then we could even change the intensity to, yeah, why not set it to on, okay? So we now go change the variable here to camera select and we see it's yellow and it's even highlighted with the little glow back to red, back to normal, okay? Um, <clears throat> you remember from these layers in the previous video, we actually changed the default feedback for the layer. It was purple here, it is rose here, and it's mint here. We could do that like underlying this whole thing on this layer as well. We could also pick a default color like ice. And if I do that, notice that back here at A6, where we have specific colors associated with either presets or cam select down here. I am now in the situation where if, if we have VMAX chosen, it will have this ice color, which is close to white, but it is different as you can see. But if I pick these two others, we are overriding. So you're also beginning to see another principle inside of this system that we have values that can override, that is inheritance. We are inheriting a background color. We can override that background color with something else depending on conditions and so on.